after decades of having to wait anywhere between 3 and 16 years for a new Star Wars film, we now live in a world where we can look forward to a new adventure in a galaxy far, far away every year for at least the next 5 years. On December 2017, we'll finally learn what Luke Skywalker has to say for himself in Star Wars Episode 8, and in 2018, Hail Caesar's breakout star Alden Ehrenreich will bravely attempt to fill Harrison Ford's leather boots in a standalone young Han Solo film. Before those, however, we've got Rogue One, a Star Wars story, coming to your local view on 16th of December. We have a mission for you. A major weapons test is imminent. We need to know how to destroy it. Set prior to the events of A New Hope, the film charts a band of unlikely rebel heroes' efforts to steal the plans for the Galactic Empire's latest weapon, the planet-annihilating Death Star. Yes, what was once a throwaway line in the opening crawl of the very first Star Wars film now has its own film. Here's hoping we get this one next. Oh, wait, that was the Phantom Menace. How rude! It's only taken close to 40 years, but we have the first Star Wars movie that's actually a war movie. The trailer reveals an explosive ground skirmish between Rebel and Imperial troops on new Star Wars planet Scarif, with X-Wings offering air support, as well as the first sighting of a functioning AT-AT in a Star Wars film since Return of the Jedi. Well, before it gets a rocket in the cockpit anyway. Basically, if you enjoy the sight of stormtroopers pinwheeling through the air, this is definitely the film for you. Now, in the vein of war films like The Dirty Dozen, the story focuses on an unlikely collection of misfits who are brought together for a near impossible mission. There is a 97.6% chance of failure. Jin Erso is a forger, thief, and the dictionary definition of a rebel. I rebel. She's recruited by the Rebel Alliance when word reaches them that her father, Galen Erso, portrayed by Mads Mikkelsen, is somehow involved in a major weapons test by the Empire. Cassian Andor is an Alliance intelligence officer and appears to be second in command on the mission. With so many volatile personalities to deal with, cool-headed Cassian acts as peacekeeper, trying to keep the rest of the squad focused on shooting stormtroopers rather than each other. K2SO is an Imperial droid reprogrammed by Cassian, although it wasn't a complete success. Think of this droid as an unhinged counterpart to C-3PO with a tendency to speak its slightly wonky mind. Ace pilot Bodhi Rook is another former Imperial employee who jumped ship after he saw how the Empire treated his home of Jeddah. Chirrut Imwe, another Jeddah occupant, is a highly spiritual blind warrior who isn't a Jedi, but adopts their way of life to overcome his natural disability. In other words, he's a complete badass. All is as the Force wills it. <laughs> Baze Malbus, Chira's equally badass partner, has little time for spirituality and puts his faith in a heavy repeater cannon instead. Standing in their way, well, once they've got through all those Imperial troopers, hover tanks and TIE fighters, is Orson Krennic, director of the Empire's Advanced Weapons Research Division. He's said to be ruthless in his quest to climb the Imperial ranks, although he's wary of a certain Darth Vader. Yes, Darth Vader is back and glimpsed all too briefly in the most recent trailer, and yes, he will once again be voiced by James Earl Jones. He's not the only returning Star Wars character either. Mon Mothma, leader of the Rebel Alliance, makes an appearance, as does Saw Gerrera. Who? Well, while Saw has never appeared in a Star Wars film before, a much younger version of Forrest Whitaker's battle-scarred veteran featured in the animated Clone Wars series, where he was trained by Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi to defend his planet of Onderon from the occupying droid armies. Clearly, the experience had a profound effect on him. Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy describes him as a battered veteran who leads a band of rebel extremists. He's on the fringe of the Rebel Alliance. Even they are a little concerned about him. In the wake of The Force Awakens' hugely successful efforts to restore our faith in Star Wars films, Rogue One has a lot to live up to. Rumors that up to 40% of the film was being reshot to lighten the film's tone were cause for concern, but these have since been debunked. Although reshoots did take place, typical practice for films of this scale, it was reportedly to improve character development within existing yes, scenes rather than replace anything already shot. Ultimately, we know how Rogue One ends, with the Death Star plans briefly in the hands of Leia Organa, but it's the story of how they get there and the sacrifices made and heroes created in the process that make Rogue One such an exciting and fascinating addition to the Star Wars cinematic canon.
So that's everything we know about Rogue One. Let us know if you're looking forward to the film and share your predictions for what you think will happen in the comments below. May the force be with us.